Okay, so can you guys tell us what we can expect from Krypton? <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah. Well, well, Krypton is is a rip roaring space adventure that's set 200 years before the destruction of the planet uh, and, and before uh, the birth of Kal El. Um, so it's a story of the characters who live within the city of of Kandor, which is a great uh, a Kryptonian city, um, and and within it there's an, an amazing science fiction culture as well as a, a time travel element to it. Uh, and basically, in our show, uh, because there is time travel involved. The Superman who who may or may not be is is very much in play. Oh, okay, so we'll get to see a little bit of Superman on the show as well. A flavor of him. Uh, definitely a flavor of him. <laughs> Even though he's not on screen, his presence is very much felt. And, and, and yeah. the, the central conflict of the story is, should Krypton die for Superman to live? Okay. So can you tell us about your characters? I know, Cameron, you play Superman's grandfather, yes. which is kind of cool. We've never seen yeah. that character before. Yeah, it's awesome. Like he's, he's only shown up a few times in the comics, but um, Seg is very different from Cal. He's a very different character. He he comes from this great house, this house of revolutionaries and free thinkers called the House of El. Uh, but very early on in the story, they are, are shamed and cast down from the lights of Kryptonian society. So he grows up in the Rankless District, which is a really tough place to survive. And he grows up with chips on, on both both shoulders really. Um, so he's a much more hardened character. He's he's a con man, he's a bit of a scoundrel and a rogue. Uh, and that was really, really fun to play. Yeah, he's a pretty hot granddad. He is. <laughs> he is indeed. Yeah. What about your character? Um, so I play Lighter Zod, who's part of the kind of Zod lineage. Um, and you meet her in she's in the military and her mum's the general, and she's kind of struggling with her identity and who she wants to be. On one side, she's kind of very fierce and she's very strong and um, she's got combat skills but she thinks differently to the military and it, you know as a soldier you're kind of meant to do as you're told um, and she's kind of grappling with that um, especially with how the status quo is on Krypton and there's a caste system and her relationship with Seg kind of shows her what it's like to be rankless to be at the bottom of society and shows her how the military are upholding this regime um, so she kind of starts questioning it and questioning how she thinks the the, um, the city should be run. Okay so how is you two characters kind of like how is their relationship kind of Go about the mm. show. Well, they are secretly in love with each other, and and this is uh, a society in which uh, to be with someone who the government doesn't want you to be with, especially if you come from opposite sides of this really rigid class structure. To be with someone you're not supposed to be with is an act of rebellion. And as George was saying, Lighter sees the world differently. She she, she sees the world beyond Candor. She sees that you know that there must be something more to life than this. There must be a better way for us to to move forward. And Seg sort of sees that as well, even though he's grown up in really harsh circumstances and, and has been hardened by that. He also sort of lies in bed awake at night thinking that there must be more to life than this, and they find that in each other. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like a little Romeo and Juliet as well as science fiction. Definitely. It is. It's definitely <laughs> Romeo and Juliet, but it's, it's quite interesting because you, you, over the 10 episodes, you really get to see their relationship and their relationship kind of develop and change and the strengths mm. of it and the weaknesses of it, um, which was, yeah, exciting. <laughs> And also being from House L and House Sod, those are two great houses who are sort of on opposite ends of the chessboard. And especially in comics now, the, the connotation of General Zod, this the great arch villain of Superman in many ways, uh, and, and to see how, how that board gets laid is, is interesting as well. Nice, interesting. Um, so obviously you guys are joining the DC Universe, which is like huge. So how is that to kind of take on those roles? Are you guys excited, a little bit nervous maybe about the fan reaction? Like... I I'm a big nerd. Like I really, like I, 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 would, give, I would give the cast lectures on on various things, and they just tell me shut up. But um, uh, it, it, it is really fun. It's so fun to be involved in something like this. And, and Superman means so much to so many people across the world, and he's an undying character. So to be a part of that, it, there is a lot of expectation and and you know a little bit of pressure. But that's all good. It, it's all it all comes from passion. Yeah, it's, it was really exciting. And when I I came on board, I'm not perhaps as much of a comic book nerd. As Cameron, <laughs> um, but obviously everybody knows Superman. Um, but really, uh, what gripped me were the scripts, and um, it's they're such fantastic stories, and they're so well written, and there's a lot of heart that goes into it. Um, so I was just really excited about that. So melding that together, it's just amazing. It's kind of these kind of big bombastic sets and world, but then within it, there's a kind of very human story. Thanks. 
Um, and then, do you guys have a favorite superhero, aside from Superman, maybe, that you like in the comic Gosh. world? Aside from Super Superman, Superman always was my favorite growing up. But there was there was another character in Jeff Johns' Teen Titans run called Superboy. <gasps> Con what? Yes, I know there are more of them. Um, and, and he's he's uh, a guy called called Connor Kent, um, and he's a clone of Superman, but also has DNA spliced from Lex Luthor. Um, so to see him sort of growing up and, and not really knowing his place, knowing that he has to follow in the footsteps of Superman, but may also turn into a villain, that's a really compelling story. And he was sort of the character who brought me into comics. Oh, nice. Wonder Woman. Pretty into Wonder Woman. Oh, I think yeah. everyone is at the moment. Yeah. Amazing <laughs> um, movie. It was yeah, really, really awesome. Really excited for the second one. Um, yeah. yeah. Okay. Kick-ass nice. woman. Um, do you have a favorite super villain? Gosh. You know, I, it's really hard to say, but I, I think right now Harley Quinn's pretty awesome. Because also, especially as well, like, talk about Shades of Grey, like, one of the awesome things about Krypton is that there are there are no real heroes, heroes and villains, there are no goodies and baddies per se. Mm -hmm. So I think they, they mine some really interesting depths with her, and she has the sort of history as a psychiatrist, and she's deeply intelligent, but is also completely insane. Mm -hmm. That is such an awesome character. Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh God, I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> For Zod, General Zod. Zod. Yeah, yeah you know, <laughs> keeping yeah. the family. Yeah, absolutely. Why not? <laughs> yeah. um, and then, if you could describe Krypton in three words, what three words would you each use to describe the show? Oh God, you go first. Um, <laughs> I'd Let me think. I'd say it's it is ambitious. I'd say it's bold, and I'd say it's fun. Why would you say that? I think it's ambitious because we're, we're doing something that hasn't been done before. We're, we're taking this in our own direction. I, I keep saying to people, this is not the show you think it is. Bold for the same reason. We've made some real choices and I can't wait for people to see what we've done with it. Um, and fun because, you know, the word dark and the, the words dark and gritty get thrown around a lot these days and they've sort of lost all meaning. And yes, the, the stakes are very high and they're grounded in the stakes of the characters, but this is a fun show. This is Superman. This is science fiction and we want people to be thrilled by it. I think I'd say it's brave, exciting and warm. Okay, why? <laughs> um, I think it's brave for pretty much for everything Cameron has just said that it is kind of this this new unseen world that it's Krypton that we haven't seen it before, um, that it's a story of Superman without Superman in it. Um, but I think that's great. I think it's always good to kind of do things that are, you know, you have to be brave and you have yeah. to try different things. Um, I think it's exciting because it's just so kind of beautiful and and I think you don't, you you really don't know what's going to happen from like, you're always left on the edge of your seat, I think, at the end of the episode. And there are big twists and turns. Absolutely. That are kind of really exciting and really energizing. Um, and I think it's warm just from the aspect of, from making it and from what I've seen, I've only seen the pilot, but I think you can really see how much effort everyone put into it and how much love went into it. And this was really like, everyone worked so hard on this. Mm. Um, and I think you can feel that when you watch it. And then, Georgina, I wanted to ask you about Black Mirror because you were in this past season. Um, you were in Black Mirror? <laughs> oh, what? It's like a joke no concept, way! So I was like talking about it all the time. Every five minutes. Guys, have you seen Black Mirror? I'm sort of in it. You know, it's not a big deal. Well, your episode was huge. You got like really great reviews from the fans and the critics. What was it like to be on the show? Because I heard you auditioned several times to be on that. I did. I auditioned a few times. I kind of, every time it came round, I was like, to my agents, is there anything I can audition for? Um, so it was a, a good lesson in that you know the ones that you don't get are as important as the ones you, that you do get because the other um, episodes that I did audition for were fantastic and the people who got the role were completely right for it but I'm glad that I didn't because I would never have been able to play Amy and I think I was the right person to take that role on so yeah. what was yeah. it like in all that positive feedback it's really exciting. It was an odd one. I, I, I never, I really wasn't that concerned about it, about how it was going to get received, just because I loved it so much and I was so happy to be a part of it. So whether it kind of got the great reception or didn't, it, well, it, I mean, Black Mirror always does anyway. It's so fantastic. It's so well written. Mm. Um, but I think it was different. Been, like like watching it, it, it felt like a different episode because it's actually, it's it's a bit more fun and charming and because yeah, a lot of those episodes are like really, really heavy. But yeah, like, and, but yours had loads of wonderful elements to it too. Yeah, we had a great time, so it's nice that it got received well. Yeah. Do you have another favorite episodes besides the one that you were in? Yeah, I love the one with Donald Gleason in the um, Be Right Back, where mm. 
Mm. Yeah, I, I, oh, maybe I shouldn't say. I don't know if people haven't watched it, but that's an amazing one, and I love him. I think he's such a fantastic actor. So yeah. That's My favourite w- was White Christmas, which stars Rasmus Hardiker, who's mm. also in Krypton. He's also very um, good. Yeah, that, and that's a, an amazing episode. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and and Colin McCarthy, director of the pilot, he directed. Um, he did which, Black uh, Museum. Yeah, yeah. yeah.